Each year since 2007, we've received exactly one official LEGO designed modular building. In some years though, we've been able to get some extras, such as 2007 when we got the fan designed Market Street and 2022 when we got the modular compatible Sanctum Sanctorum. However, there are other sets that come out in given years that lend themselves well to being modularized. This can include sets from a variety of themes, such as City, Friends, DC, Marvel, and others. In this video, I'm going to walk through three summer 2023 sets from three different themes and evaluate them by their modular potential. At the end, I'm going to rank them to determine which one I think has the best possibilities for being modularized. So let's get started. Which three sets are we going to evaluate? We have the Heart Lake City Community Center from the Friends line, the Downtown set from the City line, and we have the Main Street set from the Creator 3-in-1 line. And which criteria are we going to use to evaluate them? Well, I've done a video in the past on how to potentially modularize the Friends Downtown Flower and Design Shops, as well as evaluating the Sanctum Sanctorum, but here is the quick version. The first thing to note is that they should be inherently recognizable after being modularized. Second, does the set already provide a relatively easy way to connect to other buildings? Third, are the exterior details complex enough to be worthy of a modular building? And finally, how many pieces would it take to fully enclose it and make it modular style? Let's start with the Friends Heart Lake City Community Center. You get 1,513 pieces for $140. You also get six mini dolls. And while the color scheme may not be for everyone, there definitely is some modular potential here. Like previous friend sets, such as the Downtown Flower and Design Stores, Main Street, and the Community Kitchen, this one has a one by eight Technic brick along the base. While I wouldn't use that as the connecting piece in an actual modular, the set certainly was designed with modularity in mind. It also has a great amount of exterior detail. The first level is raised up a brick in height, which allows for a simple yet effective stairway up to the main door. Each level has a different corner technique, which is a bit quirky, but the ingot as brick style is something we've seen in previous modulars, such as the brick bank. The window detailing is strong throughout, whether it be the inverted arches on the second level, the use of three wide windows and the balcony on the third level, or the macaroni tile arch on the fourth, which reminds me a bit of the botanical garden. Another interesting technique is the use of 1x2 45 degree slopes and 1x2 inverted slopes on one side of the second level. We've seen a similar technique used before in one of my favorite modulars, the Green Grocer. Also, the roofing detail is decent in this set. It's not amazing, but it's certainly serviceable. Other nice elements include the hanging baskets and the greenery along the second level wall. In terms of pieces, the community center sets itself up well to be modularized. You have two full walls of bricks, and even though you might need to combine some of the colors to fully enclose it like a modular, or you may need to use your own pieces, it does have a good selection of bricks, albeit in a pretty loud color scheme. It also comes with quite a few tiles, which will allow you to separate the floors, and is something that a lot of sets that could be modularized are missing and would require a lot of tiles from your own collection. You also get other nice modular-like features, such as more tiles for the sidewalk, a tree with a nice bench, the 8x16 tile with a sticker, a strong selection of windows and doors, a bench, a black lamp post, and a decent number of white plates for the floors. However, there are some drawbacks to this set. The color scheme is pretty loud, and you may not like that in your modular city. Also, the colors are unique enough that you may not have a lot of them in your collection, which might make it difficult to close off all four sides of the building to make it modular style. The slide play feature also presents a problem if you wanted to have a building right up next to the community center, unless of course you had some sort of gap between the community center and the next modular building. I however think the slide looks a bit tacky for the modular city that we have. Perhaps the best way to include this building in your modular city would be as a 16 by 16 corner building. 
where you get rid of the slide or have it on a straight section where it's 16 by 16 and has a park next to it. Next up is the premier summer release for the City Line, the Downtown set. With 2010 pieces coming in at $200, this set is one of the most eye-catching city sets I've seen in a long time due to its large size and the number of details. However, does it have a lot of modular potential? First, like the Community Center, this set was designed with modularity in mind. The back of the box shows the different arrangements for the set's components, and there are 1x4 Technic bricks at the base of each building so that you can connect them to something else. The different sections of the set are constructed largely in an 8x8 or 8x16 footprint, and is topped with tiles, allowing you to combine them in a variety of permutations. The one exception to this is the walkway that spans a full 32 studs. Second, there are many exterior details to like about this set. In fact, this reminds me a little bit of a combination between a modular set and a Ninjago City set. The barbershop might be the most plain section of the set, but it still has texture with the 2x2 two two round bricks with the arches. The vet clinic has an exterior reminiscent of the Palace Cinema with the 1x5x4 arches and recessed windows. The floor above makes excellent use of magenta tiles to create a sleek, glassy exterior. Even the walkway looks great with the Nexo Knight shield and triangle tiles. Those 45 degree angles remind me of the Friends downtown flower and design shops, which as we've demonstrated here on this channel, make for a strong modular building. On the other side of the street is City Comics, which has a nice yellow and light blue color scheme. The recessed doorway is a nice touch. The level above uses some very strong snot techniques to create curves along the exterior. That, plus the AC unit and blue half-circle tile wall, takes this facade to the next level. Above that, we have a hotel, which makes good use of the 1x2x3 75-degree slope and its inverted version. The turquoise ingots are modular-esque as well, and the fourth level might just be my favorite with the roller coaster track, the palm tree, and the subtle angles created by the lime green bow slopes. This level definitely reminds me of the Ninjago City Gardens and the Ninjago City Market sets. The rooftops are also quite modern and are architecturally consistent with the rest of the set. There's a rooftop garden, some wind turbines, a billboard, kind of like the Grand Emporium has, and a small eating area. All told, there's a lot to work with in terms of the exterior. One of the potential drawbacks to the set is not having to pour too many of your own pieces into enclosing the set, as it does come with a number of columns and arches and some other large pieces. There are, though, quite a few pieces that are very modular friendly in this set. These include a number of tiles, large plates, lamp posts, a tree, plenty of windows and doors, and jumper plates on which you can pose your minifigs. You may need some white bricks to help fill in the gaps, but fortunately, these are relatively common and easy to obtain cheaply. If you do choose to modularize the set, there are a number of ways you can go about arranging it. First, you could do some sort of corner configuration, maybe even an inside corner, given that this set has a lot of different components to it. My preference would be to create two 16 by 16 buildings with the walkway connecting them. This would make it a 48 long modular building. Underneath of the walkway could be a park or green space where the bench and the tree would reside. This would also make it possible to turn each of those 16 by 16 buildings into corners and have the walkway cross your street, even if you have to modify the length of that street. All told, this set has strong modular potential. Last, we have the Creator 3-in-1 Main Street, which has 1,459 pieces for $140. This set will be released in the United States on August 1st, so let's dive into the details. This set is already a toned-down modular in some ways, as its main model has a hotel, music shop, record store, and a coffee shop. This set also comes with an impressive amount of profile bricks, tan ingots, and windows, especially sand blue windows. The exterior of the main model has some notable details, such as the snot-built windows in the hotel, 
bright light orange window borders in the record store, brick built signs for both that store and the coffee shop, dark blue rounded bricks at the foundation of the hotel that are reminiscent of actual modular buildings, and three different arch techniques above windows. The problem with this set is that it has four unique facades already in it, and none of them really have enough detail to be modular worthy. You'd have to make some significant edits and revisions to these exteriors in order to make them worthy of your modular street. Take this secondary tower build. The top reminds me a bit of the Ninjago City Gardens, but the rest of it is lackluster. Or consider this longer version of the set, ignoring the rainbow color scheme approach, there are some nice details by the main arch. How the rounded bricks and tiles for details separating the second and third level, and even the flower pots on the sidewalk to the right. Yet there's just not enough there to raise it to the level that would be close to an official modular. And that brings me to the biggest downfall of this set. You don't really get a lot of bricks, and the bricks you do get are in a variety of colors that would make it difficult to have a coherent color scheme in a modular building. Note how the walls are just five studs deep in this set, and that would mean you have to put a lot of pieces into closing off this building. So at the end, you really have to pour in a lot of other pieces from your own collection or buy significant copies of this set in order to make it work as a modular building. So how would I rank these three sets in terms of their modular capabilities? And if I could choose one set to modularize, which one would it be? Well, here we go. And third is the Creator 3-in-1 Main Street. It's the least visually pleasing set of the three and doesn't really have enough piece selection to warrant a full modularization. And second is the Community Center, which certainly has a lot of potential for modularization, but gets some points taken off for its loud color scheme. That means my first option would be the City Downtown set, which has a lot of modular-like details, generally great pieces, and a unique modern look for a modular city. Some people, though, may not like the modern architectural style with the older, more classic existing modulars, and that is completely understandable. Will we be getting any of these? Well, it's tough to say at this point. Currently, we're saving up for the new Gringotts set, which should be coming out in September. But hey, if you want to help us with that, go ahead and check out this video right here of how we modularize the Friends downtown flower and design shops. You can also smash the like button, remember to subscribe, and always remember to keep building together.